Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can do named entity recognition and relationship extraction using knowledge graphs and in Infranodus. So that in the end, you have something like this, where you can see the main entities which were detected in any discourse. In this case, it's actually Google search results for knowledge graphs. And then you can click on some entities and see, for example, how they relate to one another. So here I click on those two and I can see in which context, in this case, it's a search result, they were mentioned together. So then I can learn more about the relationship also. I can also click on several items at the same time and learn about their relationship as well. So keep watching if you want to learn how it works. First of all, you will need to go to Infranodus Visual Text Network Analysis Tool, and then you can start from typing in a search query or a topic that you would like to explore. You can also upload a, a text file or a research paper, a book, but in this case, I will use a very simple example of knowledge graphs. So I'll type in knowledge graphs, and then I will choose to analyze Google search results for this query. And if I want to turn on entity detection here, I have to go to advanced settings, scroll down, and choose to build the knowledge graphs, not only from the words used in the text, but also from the detected entities. So in this case, I'll just choose detected entities only, but you can also mix words with detected entities, and you can also replace entities with uh, the root concepts. But in this case, I will just do the, the entity detection. So then I choose that, click visualize, and what happens is that Infranodus extracts all the entities from the Google search results for the search query, and visualizes them as a graph where each entity is a node and every relation uh, that they have in the same context is the connection between them. And as you can see, of course, search results for knowledge graphs, they have multiple knowledge graphs concepts inside. So what we can do with the knowledge graphs is to, do, to select those two and remove them from the graph. So then I can see the context around them. And then the graph becomes much clearer in this case. Then the next step is that I can look at the graph itself and see which uh, entities were extracted from Google search results for this query. And the way the graph is organized uh, is actually really specific because it uses uh, the metrics about the nodes and the clusters of nodes to show you what are the most important entities that were uncovered. So the ones that have higher influence in this discourse will shown bigger on this graph, like for instance, in the context of search results for knowledge graphs, concepts like data and information are quite important. That's why they're shown bigger. And if the nodes or the concepts tend to occur in the same context together, they will have the same color and they will be closer to each other on the graph. So for example, here I can see that uh, the concept of embeddings is used a lot with the concept of space. And uh, this is why they're next to each other on the graph. And they also have the same color. But it's not the main topic in relation to knowledge graphs. This is why it's at the periphery. So as you can see, this visual representation helps you get a really good understanding uh, of the discourse around a certain topic and understand what are the central entities and what are the entities at the periphery of this discourse, which can be really interesting for further analysis. You can also use the analytics panel on the right here and uh, uh, send all those topical clusters identified using graph analysis to AI to generate high level ideas. So it's some kind of interpretation of these topical clusters, like what uh, actual topics they represent. So in this case, we see that when we search on Google for knowledge graphs, the entities that we extract as a result of the search, they are talking about data integration, embedding frameworks, uh, graph databases, knowledge panels, and then we have more topics here, ontologies, dialogue systems, and so on. So there's quite a few different topics, but the main ones are those four. And what's interesting here is, uh, like I said, you know, you can, let's say you're interested in the bedding framework. So you can click on this topic and then see what are the statements that contain those terms and in which context they're used. So then if I click here, I see all the statements that use embedding and space. And then I can also see the phrase where it was used. So it describes this relationship. And I can also jump to the search results. In this case, it's a research paper actually on the subject, right? So this allows me to really effectively learn more about a certain relationship between different entities 
and uh, jump to the content that talks about it in more detail. By the way, uh, I also want to show how it actually works. So we take original search results from Google and then we tag all the entities detected with double brackets, which is the format which is also used in Obsidian and ROM research and different knowledge management systems. And what's great is that once you tag entities in this way, you can also export this text after using this functionality here and import it into your knowledge management system. So then you will also be able to integrate uh, some external discourse or even your own ideas with, where you extracted entities into your own knowledge graphs in your favorite knowledge management system. So it's also a great way to actually convert some data into the format, which can then be integrated into your bigger knowledge graph that you're working on. I also want to show something quite interesting here. Uh, so once we represent information in this way as a knowledge graph, not only we can see the main ideas and the relations between them, but we can also use the graph to identify the blind spots in the discourse. So which topics could be better connected? Uh, and the way that it works is that if I click here, I highlight different clusters which exist in this discourse, but that are not so well connected. And then I can actually generate a few of those gaps. And usually what I like to do is to make a few generations to see if there are some clusters which are completely disconnected, which are located at completely different parts of the knowledge graph. And it's usually very interesting to think about ideas that could connect them together because they occur in the same context, but they're not so well connected in that particular discourse you're analyzing. So that means that there's a lot of potential for generating new ideas here. If you click here, it's gonna send this cluster to the built-in AI and generate some interesting research questions that you can then use to develop this discourse further. So it's also a great way not only to get a summary of a discourse, but also to generate some ideas in relation to it and to see how you can contribute to it in an interesting and positive way. And the best thing is that you're not just asking the AI to do this for you, rather you are analyzing the knowledge graph, the representation of this discourse, you're finding the gaps yourself, and then you're just using AI to help you think in a certain direction. So whatever it generates here, you can of course copy and paste it in your research, but I see it more as inspiration for the direction that you could be thinking in. So this is why actually hallucinations in this context are quite interesting because you want the AI to hallucinate in this case because you want to generate ideas that don't exist yet because you're connecting the topics which are not yet connected. Another interesting approach is that, you know, not only it helps you see how uh, a certain discourse what are the main topics inside and uh, what entities are represented, you can also compare different discourses. For instance, in this case, I was analyzing uh, search results for knowledge graphs on Google, right? And I saw that there is a lot about data integration, information, embeddings, um, less on embeddings, more on ontologies and semantics here and so on. So this gives me a general understanding of what I can find for this search query on Google. If I go back to the apps and use the same search query, knowledge graphs, knowledge graphs, but then in this case, I'm going to perform search on YouTube. So I would like to find all the different videos on YouTube with their descriptions that talk about knowledge graphs and see how they represent the subject. So here again, I go into advanced settings and ask it to only detect the entities inside. So don't just analyze words, but extract entities and tag them with this Wikilinks syntax, double brackets. And once I have it visualized, again, I will remove the two main nodes from the graph here. And I see an interesting thing that the results on YouTube in relation to knowledge graphs talk much more about AI and large language models, right? So that gives me a really good idea that, okay, on Google, if I search for it, I will find some more technical information. And on YouTube, I'm actually going to find much more insights on how I can relate knowledge graphs uh, to large language models, how I can use them in my AI workflow uh, to improve uh, LLMs and so on, right? And not only that, I can also see again uh, what are the main concepts inside. They're shown bigger, which clusters of, of concepts tend to occur together, which, which clusters of, of entities uh, uh, are actually mentioned in the same context. So for example, here the orange ones are about LLMs and large language models. 
uh, chat GPT. So for example, if I want to see what is the relation on YouTube search results of chat GPT and large language models, I click on that relation. I can also add some more nodes they're connected to, like for, for instance here, hallucinations, right? Chat GPT, hallucinations, large language models. Then I go into the uh, extract of the videos that were found that talk about these results. And here I find one video on fusing knowledge graphs and large language models. And then, then if I click on this video, I will Thank actually watch uh, a really interesting video on fusing knowledge graphs and large language models, which has zero likes, uh, 5,000 views, not the most popular one, but very interesting because maybe I, I wouldn't normally find it if I just did a normal search. So this also becomes a really interesting way to get to the information you uh, might be interested in, but that is not on the surface. Here, you're actually looking at the representation, at the map of the discourse, and you're finding the entrance points that are highly relevant for you. So this is why it can be really interesting to do that. The last thing I want to show you is how you can actually import something bigger, like a, a research paper on uh, entity extraction and knowledge graph. So here I'm going to add a new graph. I got file upload and there I can choose a, a file I have here on knowledge graphs and LLMs. So I select this file, it's a PDF, click extract. And here again, I choose to uh, extract only detected entities. So extract entities, but not the words. And by the way, you also have this option, replace entities with root concepts, which will kind of rename them to uh, their synonyms. And this might be interesting if you would like to have less data on the graph, but this is really for expert users because it changes the original discourse and you might not want to do that. But you can try this option to see how it works. So I will click next. And then it's going to ingest this document. It's going to scan through it, extract uh, the named entities, recognize them, uh, put them into this double bracket syntax and visualize them as a graph. And here I can see some interesting ideas about this paper. I see that it's talking a lot about entity and information and embedding. So much more about embeddings and the prediction of embeddings using knowledge graphs. So if I click, let's say, on embeddings and prediction, I see that they're also connected to uh, graph, information, entity, select embeddings. Okay, so then I can see in which context those three concepts, those three entities that were extracted were used, entity, embeddings, and prediction. So here it's saying how knowledge graphs can be used to enhance input tokens by incorporating entity embeddings and includes entity prediction and so on, right? So not only you can analyze Google search results but, or uh, any search results for that matter, but also research papers. Another really cool feature is that, let's say if I just want to see what was said about embeddings, I can also click embeddings here. It shows me all the relations. And let's say I will choose prediction and embeddings, right? So here you need to select uh, the amount that would enable it to make a, like a better interpretation. So for example, when you have a few, this is better summarize video. And basically what it does is that it just takes the statements that it selected, embeddings, uh, and then it talks about the part of the paper which is talking about those embeddings. So it summarizes this part of the paper and shows you uh, what it is saying about these particular topics. All right, so not only you find the connection inside the paper and you interpret it, yourself, but you can also ask the AI to create the interpretation for you. And then, of course, you can also use the same workflow um, of identifying the blind spots inside and so on. So basically, this is how you would approach it. Try it out on infranodus.com, see how it works, and let me know if you have any questions or comments, and subscribe to this video so you can get informed uh, when, when we publish new videos out. Thank you very much.